How's it going guys? Welcome to Season 5 NHL 18 Seattle Magician Expansion Mode Series. And as you guys can see here, if you missed the last episode, we are actually now Stanley Cup champions. So I'm pretty happy about this. Only took us four years to do. Uh, Ryan Getzel there was actually the highest point producer in the playoffs. I'll also give you guys a quick look at the team uh, before we get to the draft. Obviously this is our Stanley Cup winning team. So excited to just build on this. Try and get back-to-back -back cups just like the Penguins did um, this past year. So... Uh, we'll go position by position here just to make it a bit easier. Center's there, Getzlav, Stepan, Carter, Pavelski, Tierney. Um, where is he? Carter actually retired, so he's still listed here, probably until we start the draft, but uh, he did retire, so we'll have to replace him. Left wings, we got Saad from the trade deadline, Nylander, Valino, Ferlin, hoping Valino can grow. Right wingers there, Barzlow has been a beast, he needs a new deal actually. Uh, Strom's also been really solid, Milano and Brown, and then defense here, just absolutely stacked. Yossi, Shabbat, Barry, Dallin, McDonough, Dodgin. And Liljegren, and then in goal, Corpy Salah, who's a 90. So our team was pretty stacked. I think we were like 96 offense, 95 D, and 95 goalie after the trade deadline. So obviously a very solid team. Hopefully we can keep the team together during this offseason, maybe add to it even if we have enough money. Uh, very excited to see what we can do uh, over the summer. And we're at the draft now, guys, and I'm pretty sure I don't have a pick until like the third round. Don't have a, very, a pick until like really late this year as I trade away so many. Um, the Blues here want the Lightning second round pick for Cogley on a fourth. I'd rather just... Keep that pick. We don't have very many high ones. Uh, so maybe I actually have a second round pick. Okay, I don't even have the second round pick on the block. I made sure to clear my block, and yet a ton of teams just keep offering. Uh, fifth, they want to give me Levo and a fourth for a fifth. I mean, uh, Levo's probably not. I'm not even going to look at it. 1.6. He's probably not that great. These deals coming in, just like bottom feeder players, like, you know, bottom six guys, I should say, uh, to move up in the draft. Not worth it. So pick number 28 here in the second round. So many offers there. Uh, first overall was actually 81 overall, medium elite. That's crazy. 79 medium elite, 80 medium elite. Wow. Uh, so some really good guys. The four uh, first picks are probably all NHL ready. The fifth one, not quite, but still medium elite. I'm um, just kind of looking here and see if anyone got a steal. Usually there's like a medium elite later in the first round that one team gets lucky enough to pick. Not seen one here though. So uh, second round, hopefully we can get lucky. Really haven't looked too much into the players available. Uh, right there was an elite guy, I think. Uh, yeah, goalie, Cal uh, Colorado. Usually it's goalies, actually, when they do fall. Uh, Detroit, they're also getting a goalie. I think it's because, like, for scouting p teams, including me, never scout goalies because there's just so many, like, less available, so it's not only really worth the time. Uh, defenseman there, high elite. Okay. Um, exact elite, third round. Probably low elite. And then you have two high elites. One undrafted, so he'll go late. And then this high elite here, projected third round. Obviously, we're late in the second Svensson. Okay, we're going to go with him and then maybe try and trade into the third round to get the Heikinen guy. Here we go. Low top four. So, I mean, that's not too bad. And right now, guys, we're trying to make a trade with Arizona for their third round pick in this year's draft, as well as their fourth and our fourth back. Tarnstrom here, decent unsigned prospect. Brooks is like an AHL player. And then Geis Geisbers here is actually a decent prospect defenseman, but obviously uh, defenseman with elite potential is better. Plus, we're getting a couple fourths there afterwards, which we maybe can turn into a player. We'll see what they say. Trade rejected. Okay, let's see if we can just kick off Let's try and get our fourth round pick back. There we go. So that worked out perfectly. I was trying to get a third for so long, but only like there, Arizona was actually interested in like a couple players I didn't want that I wanted to trade. So now we can get that defenseman here. So I'm pretty excited about that. Hiking in. He's exact elite. Hopefully it's a medium elite. Uh, low elite, but still for the third round, that's solid. As you can see, um, right here, actually, Winnipeg had a medium elite winger. So they got pretty lucky there in the uh, third pick of the third round. And we're now picking number 32 here in the fourth round, so hopefully we can get something good. Um, if that one elite player is left, I might take him. Just, I don't want to risk it. Like, undrafted. Exact talk six, that's actually really good as well, but high elite, I don't know. I mean, we could go by projected. We still have a couple picks. We could probably get him later. The top six isn't supposed to go to the seventh. Let's just let's try projected here. And maybe we can get lucky, actually, with somebody here. Okay, so it's not looking too good here in terms of potential. Riddle, though, medium top nine. I mean, we could go for him. There's also Shields there, fringe starter. He could be, like, an actually really good goalie. Let's let's give it a shot. Let's try Shields. Oh, I'm going to have to go back and check here. Hopefully, he's decent. And medium starter. That's not too bad. So our next pick here, obviously, last pick in the fifth round. I might take that elite player just to be safe. I really don't want... Yeah, I'm going to take him, I think. And then with a the 7th round pick, or probably next pick, take Turgeon. And then take a chance on one of the other guys. So, Sunk Fist, High Elite. Uh, we gotta go back now and check. Please be something good. Low Elite for a 5th round pick. That's awesome. We're on to the 6th round pick now. Let's see uh, what we can get here. Just gonna start by Potential again. I mean, this guy's gonna go in the 7th for sure. He's exact top 6. Even if that's low top 6, 
for a sixth round pick, that's still amazing. It could be higher too. Low top six, but yeah, like I said, that's solid for the six. And our seventh round pick here is actually pick number 14. This is the Bruins pick, so let's try and get somebody solid. Uh, we could go by, like, projected. I mean, there's a couple of goalies there. Those They could be good. Like, you never know. We'll see. Exact top nines, there's, a, there's actually a, quite a bit of them. I mean, do we take a chance on the exact top nine? It's going to be a low top nine, most likely. Or we take a chance on a goalie who could be, like, a low elite goalie. You never know. I'm honestly feeling the goalie. So you got Hackett here, low backup. McGuire, low fringe. Holly low fringe, uh, high league interest. McGuire's got no league interest. I don't know if that actually matters at all, but low fringe, high league interest. Maybe he's like a sleeper elite goalie. Medium backup. Okay, that sucks, but I'm sure we could sign low top nines in free agency, so not a big deal. And that's it for the draft, guys. So overall, I think that was pretty solid. We only had six picks, but we did get two elite players, so obviously can't complain. So we're not the resign phase here, guys. We actually have almost 40 million in cap space, but we have a ton of good players to resign. So I'm hoping we have enough money to keep everybody. Getzlav actually thought it was on an expiring deal. Apparently not, though. Uh, he's got one year left. Step on here and use a new deal. Pavelski, Tierney, like so many players. So I feel like I definitely have to look and see. Like, yeah, Saw needs a new deal. I'm obviously going to sign him first. Same with Nylander. Barzil as well. Uh, Dallin needs a deal. Corpy Salo. So I really got to take care of like the important players first. Try and figure out how much money we'll have left. Corby Salo here, 8.5 for 5 years. I mean, he's 90 overall. It kind of, I think it makes sense. He actually goes up even higher. We could do 8 years till he's 35. He'll be slightly sh uh, cheaper. Um, yeah, 8 years till he's 35. I mean, he's a franchise goalie. I feel like we lock him up. 8 by 8, we could probably maybe even get a little bit cheaper than that. Like, maybe 8 by 7, 5. I don't know if he'll say yes to this. I think he might, though, which would be really good value for him, honestly. Malcolm Subban, 81 overall is also a very solid backup. Give him 1.65 uh, for two years. I think that's pretty good for him. HL goalies there signed. Medium fringe. Uh, he's probably not even worth uh, roster spots. So just going to release that guy. Uh, Dallin obviously needs a re new contract. He's 86 overall. 5.9 for three years. Jeez. And it does not get cheaper. So, I mean, we could do a one-year deal. But he's just going to get even better. So, maybe we do three years at like 5.5. Five. I mean, he's going to be a beast, so might as well uh, try and get him a bit cheaper. Dawson here is 27 now, so he has no potential. Just going to let him go. Uh, Pugliabi could offer a qualifying offer to again, but I'm just going to let him go. He didn't play all last year. Uh, Morin, 25-78. Maybe he can make the NHL team this year. He wants 1.7. What is he for defense? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He's our 7th best D-man, so I'm just going to qualify him for now. Uh, Pulak here, I'm obviously going to give a contract. He wants 1.5. Ah, uh, that's not, he's not worth one and a half. I'm just going to have to release him. Really sucks. Uh, I would have gave him a qualifying offer if I could. Hanson's going to be released there. Olofsson, uh, decent AHL guy, I guess. I don't know. 76, though. I could probably find better, honestly. This guy's not too bad. He's 23, 73. We'll give him a one year playing the AHL. Um, friend here, he sucks. Going to let, oh, I didn't mean to offer qualifying contract. Can I get that? Or where is it? I qualified him. I want that back so bad. Oh, well. Maybe we can trade him. None of the other guys are worth uh, making the team. Barzil needs a new deal. $7 million for two years. That's insane. And he gets just... Oh, wow. He gets so good. Like, eight years, 11 point. Okay, so... Two years. Let's try 6.5. I think that's pretty fair for Barzil. We're sp shedding out so much money, though. Like, we're going to lose a lot of players. Uh, the rest of the uh, right wings are actually locked up. Sod, I'd love to keep. Want 775. Oh man, so Barzil, Corpy Sal, that's like 15. Dallin, it's like 20. So we got about 20 left. So I think we're still doing okay. Sod, let's try and get him maybe 7 million for five years. I think that's a decent offer. Nylander here, wants 6.3, but he's 84. That's not worth it. Let's try one year again and see if he'll take like. 475 because at 84 overall he's still not worth the money he's asking for i don't think at least furland uh i'm gonna let go i think i can find a better player lemieux 25 76 i don't well, i'm just gonna give him a qualifying i want him a two-way case 24 75 uh let's see he wants k okay, we'll just give him uh we'll qualify him hl team needs some players haberts doesn't look too good at 24 uh, this guy, 2056, just gonna let him go. We're gonna have a ton of contract spots here to sign some hopefully decent free agents. So, I think we have enough money here we can keep Stepan. We did lose, like, uh, not Pavelski, Carter, plus, uh, to retirement. Plus, I think we had, like, a buyout come back. And I think we got some money from something else. But, 3184 wants 6.5. That is 
that is really rich for me. Um, geez, exact top six. I feel like he's going to get worse, too, at his age. That is a lot of money. Oh, man, plus we have, like, Velarde coming up. We also have Valino, who could move to center if we need him to. He's getting better. Oh, wow, that's just that's a lot of money there. Pavelski could still be, like, a solid 3.5 for an 81. Never mind. Pavelski is just not worth it. Tierney, though, is, like, the perfect fourth-line center. 2.4. Um, see, if he does 2.2, I'll keep him around. Been on our team since the expansion draft. Lazar, I'd also like to keep, potentially... Let's just qualify him for right now. Bracco is also a good AHL player. We'll give him that for one year. Stevens, decent AHL player. Uh, okay, I don't know why I think he needs an AHL deal. We'll give him a qualifying offer, though. Uh, Miller, 24-73. Going to let him go. We're going to be signing so many young players. Larson's 19-56. It's not too bad. We'll give him a contract. Uh, this guy's 20-55. Yeah, he's basically the same, but worse. So we'll let him go. So... Yeah, we can actually sign so many players here. We'll see who says yes to the deals, how much money we have, but we're going to be able to sign a ton of, like, 2A players, essentially, and maybe a couple NHL contracts. So Saad rejected my offer. He wants to test free agency. More money could change his mind, so I might have to just pay him more. Corby Salo also rejected, so I'm going to have to pay him more. Tierney rejected. Wow, nobody wants to take these deals on a Stanley Cup team. I can't believe this. Subban, even. I thought I gave him a fair deal. Nylander, Larson accepted. Bracco accepted. Hajik, Barzil did accept. Dallin accepted, but... So many guys there want more money. Like, I thought I was being pretty fair there, Stanley Cup team. Usually it's like around 85% you have to give them, but... Oh man, these guys are being sticklers. So I rejected my offer again. Corby Sal accepted, though. Uh, Tierney rejected again. I think I'm just going to let him go to free agency. Like, 79. It's just not worth it to me. Subin rejected. I mean, I'll try and keep him, give him a bit more. Nealander did accept with a one-year deal. So, okay, we got to go and uh, find out exactly what we're going to do here. I mean, these guys are just playing hardball, I feel. And I don't know why you would do that with the Stanley Cup winning team. You know, you think they'd uh, take deals. But we have $15 million still to work with. So about half of that's going to go to Sod right away. Um, step on. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to keep. We still need a second line center. So hopefully Valino grows. Otherwise, we're basically screwed. But Sod, I really want to keep. Um, so we'll, what I. Jeez, oh, what am I going to have to offer him? 7.5? Hopefully that's enough. And I'm offering Subban 1.775 for two years, so that's basically what he wants. And I think I actually might try and keep Tierney, just because he is, like, a pretty solid depth center. Let's see if he does, like, 2.325. It's a weird number. Make me feel good about getting, slight, like, a slight bargain on him, but if not, I'm definitely just going to let him go. So Saad rejected my offer for the third time. Tierney also rejected. Subban rejected. These guys are just basically saying I have to pay them what they're asking, maybe even more. Or they're going to go to free agency. So, this is just getting ridiculous, though. So I'll give him $8 million for five years. If he says no to that, I don't even know. And then Subban, I'll give, like, $2 to two for two years. It just, I, I don't understand. Like, don't ask. Like, ask for what you want. This happened before. It doesn't make any sense to me. So I've rejected $8 million. I paid him more than he wanted. Same with Subban. I gave them both more than what they wanted. Friend accepted. I didn't even want him to accept. This is just so annoying. Like, ask for what you want. Like, how am I supposed to know how much you want to pay, like, get paid? I'm not gonna just take a guess. Like, okay, I'll give Saad. He's 88. I'm gonna give him eight and a half for five years. If this doesn't get it done, like, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm not just gonna take a guess and pay him 10 million. Like, it can only, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, when do I know when to stop? Uh, Subban here, I'll give 2.22, I guess, but uh, that's just so dumb. So Saad rejected my $8.5 million offer. Like, I don't know how he's going to get more than that in free agency. Same with Subban. And I think we're actually at the free agency period now. So uh, there's really nothing I can do. Or actually, yeah, we are. So, I mean, I guess no matter what, he was just going to go to free agency. That's kind of what it seems. He's asking for less than I... I he's asking for 7.9. I offered him 8.5. This is just so dumb. Dumb is available. So, I mean, I can try getting him now. Like, I offered him 8.5. I don't, it doesn't make, this game makes no sense to me. I gave him more than what he's asking for in free agency. He's asking for an extra year, though. Like, I'll give him the extra year. I, this is so stupid. And we still need a backup goalie. Subban wants just under two. Halak wants a little over two. So I'm gonna go with Dell here. Wants 1.7. He's kind of like the best value there, um, for the deal. Also, guys, I just realized, too, kind of funny how, like, Vegas picked up Malcolm Subban, who we actually picked in the expansion draft. Just kind of, uh, realize that so I'm also gonna look at two-way players here before I look at like what other guys want to sign I have to kind of look at like the depth chart But obviously 
any good prospects we're going to want. So Simon there, low elite, obviously, we're going to give an offer to. Hopefully, he goes with us. Stanley Cup winning team. This guy, low top six, we'll give an offer to as well. That's why I don't mind having, like, you know, low contracts. We'll just kind of steal the best ones. Uh, Duda there, 1954. We'll take him as well. Uh, let's see. AHL. 2473, that's not how you say his name, but uh, O'Neal, 2055, medium top 9, that's okay, no one's interested in him, so maybe we can give him like 850k and get him, bunch of low top 9s, uh, ones, let's see, if there's any like that are young and then also high rated, they'd actually be worth getting, but it uh, doesn't really look like it, 2058's not bad. That's not too bad of an age slash overall. We'll give that an offer. Also, this defenseman here, Breezebois, 23 and 74. That's okay. Uh, we'll give him an offer. Looks like he's with Vancouver, so I don't know if he'll actually sign with us, but we actually are really low on just, like, contract spots, so trying to sign some players here who maybe can turn into players for us. Uh, this dude here, might as well give a contract. to. He's 19, about the same overall as other guys. Gore's 21 and 58. That's not too bad. 2366. That's actually decent as well. Sokolov, 800k, two years. Um, that's probably enough. Let's see. 1956. Uh, Jor Jorgensen. I mean, we could probably sign him too. Hopefully, I'm not signing too many guys. I don't think I am though. And then 2158. Uh. That's probably enough what we did so far. Looking at the rest of the free agents here, guys, I think I actually probably should give Stepan an offer as we really don't have a second line center uh, behind Getzlav after Carter retired. Valino could become that, though. Also, Stahl's here, and he's a left winger. We also could play center with 79 faceoffs. He actually might be a better value sign. Our defense is kind of stacked, so even though there actually are a few good defensemen available, Dumba, Brodeen, Slavin, uh, we just need a center more, so I'm going to try and actually get both Stahl and Stepan. I think we have, like, if we signed uh, Sod for 8.5, we still have $7 million. Ah, it might not actually work. Um, so I'll go after Stepan first. If I don't get him, I'll go for Stahl. So three years, it's a bit better. I think he was asking for more than that from me. 6.75, three years, 84 overall. Uh, it's, that's, it's a lot to pay, but could be worth it because we really don't have any other options. So we'll give him the offer. So this O'Neill guy accepted. Uh, top 9 potential. Same with Dufresne. Top 6. Top 9 accepted. Sokolov accepted, uh, Gore there, top 6, top 9, da, da, Duda, whatever, top 4, another guy, the Elite Dude accepted, so we overpaid, I think all of them, or like paid them the max, that's awesome. Uh, Stepin rejected, going back to the Rangers, okay. Uh, Dell accepted, though, we have our backup goalie, Breezewall accepted as of now. Uh, waiting to hear back from Sod, but before we do, I'm going to go and make an offer to Stall if he's available, um, which he is not, so that sucks. Uh, I was hoping I could go get him. I mean, we could still afford Dumbo and Brodeen, sign one of them, then try and trade one of our extra defensemen uh, for a, a forward. That's probably the best move as we have that salary. So uh, let's see here. Who do we actually go after? Um, Dumba, Brodeen. Brodeen's slightly cheaper. We could use a right-handed guy. Dumba's also like got some potential left still. Four years. Does he get cheaper at all? He doesn't get any cheaper. So see, we'll give him the four years, 6.35. We'll see what he says. Um, hopefully he says yes. It's gonna be tough, actually, like, oh, wait, Saw doesn't say yes, too, that's gonna really hurt. Saw did accept, accept, though. I don't know, like, he put us through so much pain during the resign phase. Rejected my offer five times. I gave him more, I offered him more than I actually gave him free agency. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Dumbo, though, went with the Flames. Um, we'll see if Brodeen is still available, and obviously, too, if we have to have enough money to sign him. He's no longer available, so never mind. Uh, this is gonna be tough, but hopefully we can work some magic here, and, uh, Fill out the rest of the team. Also, the Canucks chose to match our offer to Breeze Boss, so unfortunately, we're not going to get him. So, looking to sign some more two-way guys, as our HL team is going to be pretty terrible, as pretty much our entire team's either like NHL or below 60 prospects. So, uh, this Ahill guy, I don't know how to say his name. Going to see if he'll maybe take like a one-year deal. I'm hoping like some of our really low-rated guys get good. So, this dude again, um, what's his name? Paul Moon will give him a one-year deal. I mean, if they do good for us on the HL team, they grow. Obviously, I could keep them, but. Don't want to have to worry about keeping them around. Sean Day's available. Why not give Sean Day an offer? Uh, I should give him more. I didn't realize he was an RFA, but maybe he'll say yes, and his team will say, you know, whatever. So Paul Mu accepted. Um, I'm hoping the Ahill guy did. I know I'm saying his name wrong, but it's such a weird name. Like, it's AHL. Uh, Sean Day stayed with the Rangers. Ahill did accept, though. So just a couple AHL players. Going to see what's available on the trading block. Uh, we still need, like, a second-line center, a fourth-line left wing, 
and some HL players, so we'll see what we can do here. So going through the training block, we've seen that Calgary has back on the block, 32 years old, 84 overall, making 5.8 for the next two years. The value though isn't too crazy, and like I said, we need a second line center. Uh, we could move Valino to second line center, but then we still, like, we need a left winger. Third line center also isn't that great, so we just need a center, we need a body. Um, we'll see if we can give up to try and trade for him. Hopefully it doesn't cost us too much. All right, guys, so I just had a couple more prospects to the offer, as well as a fourth and a fifth on Calgary's side. Friend here I accidentally uh, gave a qualifying offer to, so I don't even want him. I'm trying to get rid of him now. And then Brody here is a decent prospect, top 9 for potential. I think he's good enough that he could actually get the trade to go through, plus get maybe a fourth and a fifth, hopefully at least one of the picks. Uh, we'll see here, though. The value is really equal on both sides. Here we go. Trade accepted. So, I mean, yeah, they really value that top 9 guy, even though they didn't want him, but... Got us backland plus a fourth and a fifth, which we really need. Uh, this year's draft, we actually had a second, um, our own fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. So obviously now we have an extra fourth and fifth. The year after, we don't have a first or a second. The year after that, we don't have a first. We actually don't have a first till 2025. So we really need all the extra picks we can get. I just got this notification that Steven's accepted our qualifying offer. 76 overall, probably an AHL player. Um, as you can see, we're actually almost through the end of August. Uh, I was basically simming through the rest of the summer to try and wait uh, to get some good deals on free agents. Obviously, like... Uh, when you get closer to the start of the season, they actually start accepting better deals, and we could still use like some fourth line players. Uh, Lazar and Morin, we're still, still waiting to hear back from in terms of our qualifying offers. I don't really think I can afford them at their one way deal, but hopefully on a two way. Um, but like I was saying, I'd like to get some like solid deals here on guys. Now, 77 is the best available in free agency. I was hoping there'd be some 79s available we could sign for the fourth line, but 77, like that is rough. Um, I don't know. Might actually have to just. Uh, trade for somebody, as I think we already have like 77s in the AHL, so it's going to be interesting to say the least. And Brendan Lemieux also accepted our qualifying offer, so that's good to see. 76, like he'll probably be in the AHL, and his season's almost about to start here. We're almost in the preseason, I should say. Uh, still waiting to hear back from Lazar and Morin. We'd really like to have them, at least in the AHL, maybe even honestly on the NHL team we might need them, so... Hopefully they'll accept our qualifying offers. So we're at the start of the preseason now, and Lazar and Morin still haven't accepted our qualifying offers. Um, I think it'll be cheaper now. Yeah, Lazar wants 1.15, so I can probably get him for like 1 million for one year just to play. Uh, Morin here would be in the AHL, so like he's not even worth the 1 million. But I think we can bury that um, if he is in the AHL, especially too before waivers will send him down. So hopefully they both accept that. Uh, Morin will boost the AHL D. Lazar will actually be fourth line for us. And I was looking at it, I think Valino's probably going to be second line center, back will be third line. We still could use like a bottom six winger though, honestly maybe even two. So I'm going to go see if I can maybe pick them up from some team for um, not too much in terms of assets. So looking through the training block, and I seen that Detroit had Colburn on the block. He's pretty solid, like fourth line forward. You can see he's got good defensive stats there, decent face-offs. Offering them Sokolov, who I signed, probably didn't need to, he's not really that good at all. Um, Halley, prospect goalie with backup potential, and a seventh round pick. I mean, the value is almost non-existent for him. Hopefully they say yes to this. Trade rejected. Okay, we'll try like offering a 5th instead of a 7th, but that's about as good as I'm going to do here for Colborne. And they say yes. That's not too bad of an ad. We really needed like some help on the 4th line. Also, guys, Lazar just accepted our offer, so that's really good. Help to fill out that 4th line and Morin. So, team should be good now. Might have to make a trade for like one more player, but other than that... Uh, probably ready to start the season. And here you guys look at the NHL team going into this season. So not as good as it was um, at the end of the last year. Like we made so many good trades during the offseason. And then especially at the deadline. But still pretty solid. So Saad, Getzlav, Barzal on the first line. I mean that's going to be a sick first line. Strom, Valino, Nylander should also be really solid second. Then you got Lazar, Back, then Milano. So not too bad a third. The fourth line, Brown, Bracco, and Colborne's okay. I wish it was a little bit better. Defense is still really solid though. Yossi, Dallin, Barry, Shabbat. McDonough and Liljegren, and then of course in goal, Corby Salo, or sorry, Scratch. Uh, in goal, we have Corby Salo basically just carrying the team there. And then Dell's a 79 now, so kind of pissed he dropped by one, but uh, what are you going to do, I guess? Um, HL team here, obviously, Schneider, Vavalainen, and still our two goalies. Starting line up there, you can see we have Comtois, Velarde, and Stevens on the first line. Uh, Wood, we just signed with Hayden and Lemieux on the second. We got that Al guy, Godin, and Palmu on the third. The McGuire, he's actually got low leap potential, maybe he'll grow. Uh, Larson and Osborne, who also has low elite on the fourth. Defense is actually not too bad. Now we got Morin, Hendry, uh, Zborov, how do you say this guy's name? Zborovsky, uh, Meet, Hajik, and Gore. So, I mean, you know, the HL team and HL team, I think both got a little bit worse. As we had some cap problems, we lost some players, but still should be two good team. And taking a look here at our ratings, guys. Winnipeg there, 89, 86, 66. So obviously, not starting their main goalie. Our ratings there, 93, 95, 94. So, actually, didn't drop too much. Uh, defense is the same. Offense dropped three from the end of last year, two from the beginning of last year, 
and then goalie actually dropped once. I mean, still pretty close to how our team was rating when we won the cup, so I think we still have a chance. And right here, guys, the AHL rating, 75 offense, 82 defense, 79 goaltending, so not too bad, I don't think, for an AHL team. So I just finished saving the first month, guys. NHL team, 5-4-2. and two. We never seem to start off that great anyway. AHL team, 7-3-1. and one. So we'll keep saving here for a couple more months and see where we're at. So we're now at the end of December, guys. We have a record of 18, 15, and 3. Lost our last three straight games in December. Would have had a bit better record otherwise. AHL team, though, crushing it, 22, 11, and 3. Take a look here and see where we are in the standings. Should still be in a playoff spot. We're fourth place there, so we have one of the wild card spots. Only three points out of first place. It's actually very close. Colorado, St. Louis, Winnipeg, all above us. Barzil is currently our leading scorer. 27 points, 36 games. So we'll send a couple more months here to the trade deadline. See where we're at. Maybe make another trade for like uh, somebody awesome at the deadline. We don't have that much cap space though, but we'll see what we can do. And right here, guys, we're getting an offer from the Vegas Golden Knights offering me Benito a fourth and a fifth for a second round pick. Personally, though, I think we can get better for a second round pick. Uh, so I'm just going to say no. So I just got this trade offer from Toronto, offering me Kadri for our second round pick and Turgeon, who's a top 6-4 potential uh, prospect. That seems like a lot. I don't know what Kadri's rated right now. 84, but I mean, so I don't know. If, if we did this, he would probably play like wing on the third line. Um, see, we really don't need like more second line players. We just need like third and fourth line players. I'd rather hold on to the second round pick because it's our only high pick. Especially too, Turgeon's a pretty solid prospect. So I'm going to say no to this. Just trying to get some like lower rated depth players at the deadline if we're still in contention as you can see right now Not looking good after our three straight losses. We actually lost three more in a row So six straight, but looks like we might be getting a bit better here All right guys, we're at the trade deadline now. We have a record of 30 28 and 5 So not quite as good as I was hoping HL team though is really good 41 17 and 5 I'm um, just here to see where we are in the standings as usually I make a bunch of crazy trades at the deadline to make us a playoff team And we currently are a playoff team uh, 65 points there. I meant to say uh, Stanley Cup contender, not a playoff team. We're usually top of the division, so uh, this is in a good spot. We're a wild card team. Obviously, losing a lot of players did hurt us, so I'll try and trade or like make a couple small trades. Nothing too crazy though. Um, we'll see who's leading the team here in points. Uh, Barzil's obviously number one. See how everybody else is doing. HL team has to be like dominating as well. So Sod there, 34. Hoping for a bit better than that from him. Yossi, 33. Strom, 32. Getzlev, 30. He's an 86 now. That actually really hurts us. Uh, Nylander there. See, he's... I don't know. I feel like Nylander's always underperforming. Valino's okay there. I mean, has Barry dropped in overall? Okay, no, he hasn't. So, Colborn, 22. That's actually not too bad, but... I don't know. Shabbat, 22. I'd expect a bit more. Overall, our team's doing okay. One thing that really hurts us, too. Corby Seller just got injured. Injured until the end of March, so... Uh, Dell has to basically carry the team. I don't know how well that's going to work. Hopefully, uh, he can do it, though. Um, I had, uh, it's probably not going to happen. I'll take a look here at the AHL goalies. Or actually, I'm not, really like, too concerned with them. I want to see the AHL scores, in case we have any, like, really good players coming up. Smiles Wood guy, 49. Stevens, 47. Lemieux, 45. Um, let's see. Comtois, 36. Where's Velarde? 41 games, 28 points. So that's pretty solid, actually. Uh, see where the AHL team is in the standings as well. They should be, like I was saying, pretty high. Yeah, the first place, 87 points, so they're crushing it. NHL team, though, needs some help. So I'm going to see if I can add third or fourth line guys for late picks. Okay prospects. Other than that, though, I'm not going to be making any big trades. So right now, guys, making an interesting trade with Minnesota. Trading them Barry for Granlin. Uh, they want Barry. Granlin's on the block. He's got one year left. 30-year-old, 86 overall center. Uh, Barry's a 30-year-old, 86 overall defenseman. Now, defense were stacked. Um, forward, we need some help. And especially, too, after this year, I feel like... Gets lab. He's an 86 now. He could be even worth that worse after this year. Uh, he maybe even retire. Uh, Valino, I mean, he's gonna be getting better. Backlund will be like solid third line center. But we could use Granlin, so I could use like the Gets lab money and the Barry money to re-sign him. Plus, get a big name free agent. Now, I don't know if I'll be re-signing Barry because on D we have Lodgerin to also re-sign, and then of course in front of him or with him, I should say, we have Yossi, uh, Dallin, Shabbat, McDonough still. Um, and, you know, we could even sign like a lower end guy. So I think this trade makes sense. I hope it makes sense. We'll call up Morin uh, to be like the bottom pairing guy. Um, yeah, here we go. Make a nice trade, hopefully. So we have to call up Morin. So hopefully, like I said, that team, uh, that trade, I should say, uh, gives the team more depth. I'll see if I can make any other small trades. And hopefully we keep our playoff spot. And looking at other teams, guys, I've seen that the Islanders have Calfoot on the block. He's 23 now and still only a 73 overall. Uh, so look at his value there. Compared, of course, to Barzil, who's like an absolute beast for us, 24-88, so uh, definitely won that trade. And right here, guys, trying to get another trade. This one's with Ottawa for Hag, pretty solid defenseman, 
27, 80 overall, offering O'Neal, decent prospect, 21, 57, medium top 9, will help just to like beef up the defense, and they say yes, so I think those two trades, honestly, even with the team a bit more, should be able to at least like, you know, do decent in the playoffs. So after those two trades, here's an update to look at the roster, Saad, Gramlin, Barzal on the first line, Valino, Getzlav, Nealand on the second, Lazar, Backlund, and Strom on the third, then Brown, Bracco, and Colburn on the fourth. Milano's injured right now. He'll obviously sub in for Lazar on the third line. And then Lazar will probably push out Brown, I guess, on the fourth line. So the forward group, obviously, a lot more depth there now. Um, not only at center, but just kind of helped out our wings. And then defense is still pretty solid, too. Like, Yossi down on the top. McDonough, Shabbat, and then Hag and Liljegren. I don't think that's too bad at all. Like, I really like that trade. Barry for Granlin. And then goalies here, we have Dell and Schneider. Corby Sal is still injured, so hopefully he gets back soon. We really do need him. But once he does, I think this team's honestly pretty solid. And uh, she will be able to keep a playoff spot. All right, guys. So I just finished saving the regular season, and it did not go as I hoped. 38, 37, and seven final uh, record. AHL team though is 50, 25, and six. They're sick. But after the trade deadline, uh, we lost I think five straight games there. One OT loss. We got 1.5 games, which isn't good. One win against Dallas, and then we got three more straight losses. Corby Salah came back on the 19th, but it was like too little, too late. The five straight losses there, plus a bunch of losses in February, like. They really hurt us. I mean, there's a chance we maybe get, like, the second wild card. I doubt it, though. Um, we'll, we'll take a look right now. I, I highly doubt we got it. Um, oh, my God. We actually made it to the playoffs. 83 points. Uh, we somehow had the tiebreaker against Nashville. And then Chicago is 82 points. I thought we were done for. I thought we were making the playoffs. We did not deserve to make the playoffs. That's crazy. Um, I thought it would at least take 90 points, but... 83 somehow gets it done 50.6 win percentage that's insane like chicago had a 50 right on they're one point out uh let's take a look here at the pacific wow 82 what the hell or sorry that's games played i'm an idiot um 89 got it done in the pacific but luckily la there with 80 um gave us the shot like we're the worst team in the playoffs at least in the west now we'll take a look here in the entire league how many like better teams are making it in the islanders had 92 points not making it colorado 91 or sorry Boston 90, Washington 89, Montreal 89, Florida 88, oh my god, that's so embarrassing. So, one, two, three, five teams had uh, better records than us, finished more points, and we're making the playoffs instead of them. Uh, that is hilarious, um, but hopefully we can like take advantage of it, be like a Cinderella team this year, even though we did win the cup last year. Uh, we do not deserve to be there right now. Barzil there, 61 points this year, not bad. Saw 55, so he dropped off once he got paid. Uh, Yossi, not bad. Granlin. Could be better. I mean, did better than Getzlav at least. Uh, Nylander, I expect more from him. Strom did just as good. Uh, Valino there. Hopefully he can start growing even more. Shabbat. So Lazar 26 isn't too bad for fourth. Or no, he was on the third line for a bit, wasn't he? So, I mean, not too bad overall. Uh, goalies here. Corpy Salo. Decent record. I mean, Dell actually, or yeah, Dell had a negative record. So with Corpy Salo going down and having a worse back, I mean, Dell instead of Subban, like that really killed us this year. Uh, still somehow made the playoffs, though. Schneider crushing it in the AHL. We'll see what we have to look forward to here in the AHL. Uh, Woods got 58. Lemieux got 56. Stevens, 56. Um, how's Velarde doing? Column 12, 43. Velarde, 39 and 59. Uh, pretty solid there. We'll also see how the AHL team is. I mean, they should be first place, I think. At least, yeah, they got to be first place in the division. They're first place in the division. 106 points, but uh, only in the division, so there must be a better team there in the conference. Not too big a deal, so... I'll get the playoffs started here. I am very curious to see uh, kind of like who we're going to go up against. Actually, and one thing I'm going to show you guys quick before I forget. I want to see who the leading scores were in the entire league. So Stamp goes here, 97 points. Tarasenko, 89. He actually played 10 less games. That's crazy. Tavares there, and the Islanders missed. McDavid, Crosby still killing it at 34. Giroux, uh, Backstrom on a Golden Knight. That's so funny to see. Hall there, Kutcher, Galchenyuk, Sprong. Uh, Sprong's killing it. I could have traded for Sprong a while ago, but he's only an 85. I don't know. Oh, he must be playing with Crosby. That's why. Palat, Patch, Reddy, Kane. So, more or less the regular names. Like I was saying, though, we're going to get the playoffs started here and see if we can be a Cinderella team. Don't deserve to be here, but we'll try and make the most of the opportunity. So, first round here, guys, we're matched up with the Oilers. I think we played them in the conference final last year uh, to move on to the Stanley Cup final, and they actually were beating us 3 nothing before we reverse sweeped them. So, 91, 95, 91 for the Oilers. We have 94, 94, 94. So, I mean, our stats are better overall. Uh, we'll take a look at their lineup here and see how it's changed from last year. Hopefully, I remember more or less what it is. I think it was, like, pretty top-heavy with McDavid. I think they even had, like, a couple 60s, honestly, um, on their fourth line. So, they got that uh, fixed. They got Nuge, McDavid, Pujarvi, 
Slipper Chef, Dreisel, Lucic. So top six is similar. Poirier is still there. Same with Wilson, who we traded them. Uh, Kagula, Shaw, Benson. So yeah, they got a better fourth line now. Clefbaum, Larson, Tanev, Honka. I think he's new. Sakara, Braun. So their defense actually looks a bit better too. Talbot's still an 87. Lekin in here, an 80. He's a medium elite goalie. Um, so I mean, that's a pretty solid team we're going up against. Our team's good too, though. Obviously, going to have to take on the best in the first round due to how bad we play during the regular season. But it doesn't matter if we can get by them. That's all that uh, counts. So let's see here. First game in Edmonton. Let's try and uh, you know start off the playoffs here with a win. That'd be amazing. So nothing in the first period. Uh, Backlund Lucic each score, and then Backlund and Kagula score. Can Backlund get the Hattie in the game winner? Uh, he does it! No way! Backlund geez, has a hat trick in the first game. What a trade there in the offseason. I guess he just plays better whenever he plays the Oilers. I, I was actually kind of kidding about that. Him with the hat trick and the game winner. That's insane. Um, it's going to go best lines there for Anchorage. So game number two somehow got it done in OT there. If Backlund can keep this up, that would be amazing. So here we go. Second game, first period. Uh, season scores for them. Uh, we get Saad and Granlin to score. McDavid scores once, or 2-2. And Valino and Saad each score. So there we go. I mean, I think it was because we didn't have Corby Salo that our record was so bad. And now that he's back, like our team is playing really well. I mean, hopefully we can keep this up here. Robert Haig's also back. So I'm just going to go best lines here. I think it might... I'm actually going to have to go edit that. I think the best lines, I actually don't like how they look. So one sec. I just fixed up the lines. Going into game three now. Can we keep it going here? First period, 1-1, Lazar and Kagula each score. Nothing in the second, or the third. We're going to OT again. Oh, we're going to another OT. Oh, there we go. Thomas Shabbat, game winner, or OT winner, I should say. Uh, that's amazing. So we're actually up three. Now, last year, they were up three on us, so can't get too cocky here. Uh, still four games left, but, um, I mean, we're looking pretty good here. Corby Salo got a shutout, or sorry, one goal he let in in the last game. He's looking good as well. So game number four, uh, Honka, Lazar each score. Uh, McDavid with a couple, Barzil with one, we're down one here, uh, we can't come back, I thought, you know, maybe we could tie it up, but that's okay, so, we still have the 3-1 lead here, going to Edmonton, where we're undefeated so far, so hopefully we can keep that going, that'd be pretty awesome, uh, Anchorage, no way, I thought they were going to dominate, they actually lost the first round of their playoffs, 3-1, to one. that's really surprising, but, more concerned about the NHL team, it's game 5, first period, there we go, Getzlav on the board, uh, Lucic scores for them, going to the third, no, we're going OT again, and there we go, down with the OT winner, we're moving on, I can't believe we got by Edmonton in, uh, what was it, five games this time around, oh no, Seattle, oh, okay, so we'll do assistant coach replaces player, that means uh, Morin's going in for him, but yeah, like, last time we went seven games with the Oilers, reverse sweep, we almost got swept, and then this time we get them in five, that's crazy in the first round, uh, scouting will do real quick, I just got a notification too that McDonough's now back, so don't have to worry about that for this next series, uh, playing Calgary Flames, so, Taking on both Alberta teams here. We'll take a look at Calgary's team, 92, 94, 85. So uh, we have the same defense, two better offense, and obviously goaltending, almost 10 better. Uh, so goaltending there, hopefully that's like the deciding factor. Kirby Salo can uh, carry us by this second round. We're going to take a look at Calgary's team. Johnny Goudreau, I noticed, was still their best player. 90 overall, Monaghan could shock the sick first line. Uh, there's Connor Kidd, Bennett, and Hayes in the second. Uh, Klimchuk there, Jankowski, Panic, Veselainen, uh, Josephson, Shinkurok, so not a bad forward group. Defense, they still have Brody, Hamilton, Dumba now, and Stone, so they lost uh, Giordano, obviously, and Hamannick. Schmaltz, TVR, so I mean, that's still a pretty solid defensive group. Goaltending, though, Parsons, 81, okay. If we can't beat them with an 81 goalie, like, oh, that's so bad. It seems like Calgary just never found their goalie for some reason, so... Pretty much the same issues they have in real life right now. Uh, they have a good offense, amazing defense, just no goaltending. So we'll see how we do against them here. I'm hoping we can keep it going. They actually went to a seven game, uh, seventh game, I should say, in their first round series. First period, though, first game, McDonough gets one. Uh, Klumchuk answers back, and there we go. Two goals, Lazard and Backlund, two former Flames, uh, both scoring there in the third. Give us the big 3-1 win. So here we go, moving on to game number two. Just notice, too, like we're always going to be basically playing um, at home at the other teams at the other teams home I should say as we're like the worst probably team ever to make the playoffs but let's be like the first ever worst team to make the playoffs to win the cup or something like that I don't know um, wow that's a lot of scoring Hayes Goudreau Shinkarak Granlin gets one another former flame um, okay Sodden gets lab we're actually within one TBR gets one and there we go no way Granlin McDonough the comeback that's insane I thought we were maybe gonna be able to force OT with the fact we finished that game off in regulation that's crazy. So up to nothing now in the Flames. The team is rolling here. 
Can we keep it going? I'm hoping we can. We're heading back to Seattle. Game number three, first period. Um, down two, Connor with two, actually. Uh, there we go. Dallin gets one. That's all we needed. Pull within one. Ah, uh, can't do it. So, uh, still up two to one on them, which is good. Hopefully, we can get this uh, game four win. That'd be really good if we could go up 3-1 and not have this series all tied up. But, we'll see what happens here. I believe in Corpy Salo. You know, he's going to be the, uh, what do you call it, the... Uh, just uh, deciding factor in this series. I couldn't come up with that word. Uh, Getzlam and Hayes each score. Oh, wow. Okay, we need to get one here in the third. Oh, we get two. Nylander Strom. There we go. So our team is just coming alive in the third period. I'd love to see that. Uh, so we're now up 3-1 on the series. Three games to go. We need one win here. Two games in Calgary. One in Seattle. Let's see if we can uh, finish it off here in five games, just like the Oilers series. First period, no scores. Second period, uh, Milano gets one. And, okay, they're forced an OT. Monaghan with a goal. There we go. Granlin with the OT winner. Traded for him. He came in clutch, forcing us or bringing us to the conference final. I am so pumped. This team is somehow doing it. Like, when I was looking at the points, guys, before I actually checked the standings, I thought this team wasn't even in the playoffs. The fact that we're now in the conference final is just crazy. Going up against the Avs now. So the Avs, finally a good team. Uh, we'll take a look here and see what they're looking like. I mean, they got Jost, obviously, Ranton, and they have a lot of good young players. Uh, so offense is actually the same as ours. Defense was one worse. Goaltending, oh my god, 13 worse. I don't know who their goalie is, but somehow they made it to the conference final with that goalie. I'm very curious to see. But I think they're the only team so far that's had as good of offense and defense of us as us. So, um, I mean, that's a bit worrisome. Yeah, that first line is unreal. Ranton and McKinnon and Landis Gog. I forgot that they got Hishier in this. So Gregorenko, Hishier, and Duchesne. Bailey, Joss is on the third line. Nieto, Olofsson, Antropov, who's also lead potential. Cousins. Yeah, that that first line is just deadly. Like, that's insane. Um, even the second line actually is really insane too. Uh, defense, Zadarov. Okay, their defense... I gotta look their defensive stat again. There's no way it was the same as ours because that's a lot worse. Um, the goaltending there. Wow. Bernier, 78. Werner 74. Like, Corby Salo just has to play average, and we should be able to get this. The only thing, though, is, of course, their offense. Like, that first line is deadly. I mean, ours doesn't stack up too bad. Like, ours is pretty good, though, in comparison. Our defense is much better. Goaltending is not even close. I want to see what their uh, defensive rating actually was. 93. I don't know how their D is a 93 and ours is a 94. That just doesn't seem right. But ours, ours is a 93 as well. But anyway, yeah, this, this does seem right. I don't know. Uh, their offense, though, is stacked, so hopefully we can shut down that first line. That's pretty much their whole team. First second line. Uh, there we go, Getzlav with a goal in the first period. Nothing in the second. And there we go, Yossi in the third period. So up 2 nothing against Colorado there. I'm winning the first game. Moving on to game number two now. I mean, this team is rolling. I'm loving it. I mean, the other teams, I don't know what they're doing. Like, how are you going? How are you starting Jonathan Bernier? How do you not get a better goalie? But game two now. Uh, there we go, Lazar and Backlund, two former Flames, Greg, Ran Greg Hanko gets one, Hashir and Olofsson, Valino gets one, so tied 3-3, going to the third. Oh, wow, they got us. Greg Ranko, Nieto, and then Barzla for us. So, their first line there, actually, I don't even think, was the one that was scoring, and uh, they beat us 5-4. So, that's, a, that's not good, but it's only 1-1, one, one. Uh, a lot of game left. Let's do a scout real quick. So, game number three here, guys, first period, tied 1-1, one, one. Greg Ranko, Nylander, each score. Uh, there we go, Nylander again in the second. Okay, Ranchin is forcing it to OT. And there we go, gets that with the OT winner. Love that. So, up 2-1 now in the Avs. Let's see here if we can make it 3-1. Jeremy Bracco's injured. Okay. Up 2-1 still in the series. Hopefully here we can make it 3-1. Uh, I do not want to, you know, get all tied up here. I want to keep this lead. So, um, game number four in Seattle. Let's do it. First period, no scores. Second period, Shabbat and Third, there we go. Nylander down each score. Landis Scott gets one. Not enough, though. So, 3-1 win there, and we're making it a 3-1 series. Now we just have to win one of the next three games to move on to the cup final. Hopefully we can do it here. I'm pumped. I like, you know, I don't want to say it, but you know what I'm thinking. So, uh, game number five. Here we go. Nothing in the first. There we go. Colburn, Yossi each score in the second. And Saad gets one, and then Antropov gets one. So, we're moving on to the cup final. Back-to-back -back years. That's what I wanted to say. Cup final in back-to-back -back years. That's amazing. Again, like, we were not even supposed to be in the playoffs. I bet you all those teams that we made ahead of are just so pissed. And we're playing the Pittsburgh Penguins, the last team to win back-to-back -back cups. Can we take them out to do it ourselves? Uh, we'll see what the Penguins are actually looking like. I think so. Crosby and Sprong's probably their top line. Uh, really good offense, defense, and goaltending. Obviously, they have Murray in net, so 
Yeah, this is probably going to be our toughest uh, competition yet. Actually, the Oilers team was very good as well, so um, let's see, though. So yeah, they got Sprung, Crosby, and Kessel in the first. Uh, Hornquist, Malkin is now in 84, and Gensel in the second. Uh, Di Giuseppe, Broussard, Connolly, Kunako, Lindbergh, McGinn. So I mean, still solid. Crosby's still in 92, and even though he's a 34-year-old. Malkin dropped a lot, uh, he's, even though he's only one year older. Uh, defense here, they got Muzzin, Martin, Latang on the second. That's strange. Mata, a 70, how is a 73 and a 78? I think their defensive rating was like very similar to ours. Or actually, you know what? Their defense was really low. Uh, Murray, though, and Gus So yeah, they have two solid goalies. Um, I mean, I still believe in Corpus Salo, even if more, uh, Murray's a bit higher rated. Offense, I'd probably take ours, and defense, ours is definitely higher. Yeah, there's an 89, my bad. So ours is five higher. This is going to be a good series, but I think I like our chances. I think we can get this done. All right, here we go. Game number one in Pittsburgh. Um, oh my gosh, they just shelled us. Shabbat gets one, though, keeping us, you know, within two. Um, not looking good. Conley gets a couple. Oh, wow, what a third. Our team just comes alive in the third. Valino, Backlund, Getzlev, all score. Four COT, I don't know how. And there we go, we ride the momentum. Getzlev with the goal. Look at that, we are down 5-2 to two going into the third. I can't believe we came back. This team keeps surprising me. Like, I thought we weren't making the playoffs. I didn't think we were winning, like, a couple of games where somehow we came back in the third and then OT. It just keeps, I don't know, I don't know how this team does it, but it's insane. So, game number two here. Come on, let's see if we can get this done. Nothing in the first. Look at that second period. Yossi, Barzel, Saw, Nylander, and Colburn just gets an extra one there just because. Makes it a 5 nothing game. Uh, Corby Sala with the shutout. Those are both of our games in Pittsburgh. So, we like, rally back for the comeback, and then we just go and embarrass them in the second game. Let's try and keep it going here in the third game. I am so pumped right now. Come on. First period, uh, Conley scores one for them. Milano answers back. Okay, Sprung there with the game winner. So we're still up 2-1. Um, hopefully we can get this next game here. Big game number four. This is a vital, vital game. As so far, all three of our series, we've actually won in five games. So, I mean, we'll see if we can keep it going here. I mean, it's a cup final, so you never know. But here we go. Uh, Backlund. There we go. Valino Milano. And Kessler gets one, but it's not enough. So we're going to game five now with the Stanley Cup on the line. Can we win the cup within 20 games? Like, that's insane. Like, all three series so far, or this is the fourth series that's gone to a game five with, like, the series on the line. If we could get this, that would just be unreal. So here we go. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm, just, I'm so nervous right now. First period. Oh, that's not good. Uh, there we go. We tied it up, though. Down 2 nothing. Milano and Saad come in, tied up. So... Resume simulation here. We're looking for one goal here to take this thing. Volino gets one early, so we're down. Uh, we're back in it. 3-2 after being down 2 nothing. This team is just insane. Uh, Crosby, of course, ties it up. Not going to go down without a fight. Ten minutes left here in the period. Is this thing going to go to OT? Five minutes to go. Come on. And it's no late heroics. OT. I think it's time I sub in. So, Kessel just scored about a minute into the overtime. I wasn't even, I was about to say how I was like pumped to try and win this. And he just snipes one. So I could have made it so we won every single series in five games, which has been like super impressive. I don't know if any team's ever done that, but going to game number six now at home. I mean, I'd rather win the cup at home anyway. Let's see what happens here. First period, uh, we're up 2-1, saw with a couple, sprung with one. Second there, Crosby and Barsley each score. So we'll resume simulation now, up 3-2. to two. Hopefully uh, we can uh, hold on to this lead. I feel bad for letting the boys down there in OT. Crosby again ties it. Jeez, Crosby's like the X Factor. We got Corby Sala though. We got players on our team. Come on. Are we going to go to OT again? Um, seven minutes to go here. There we go. Brandon saw it. I think that's a hat trick for him in this game. Proven his worth for that free agent signing after giving us all that trouble. Minute to go. Let's go. Here we go, guys. A minute and a half left. Game six. Oh shit, there we go. I can't believe I just picked that off. I was just trying to say, wait, I gotta score this. I gotta score this. Oh, I ran out of room. Uh -huh. So, overtime, game six, and like a final. The cup's on the line. I just realized, too, the Penguins have a power play. So, coming in here, trying to kill off a penalty. Up by one. Who's on the penalty kill here? Lazar and Backlund. Let's go. Trying to win back to back Stanley Cups for the first time since the Penguins who were playing. I'm just gonna play it smart here on the PK. Don't want to give them any, like, you know, odd man rushes or anything. Man, our jerseys look good, though. Dallin here. Step on, on the tang. Oh, Crosby. I'll oh, block that shot. Yossi. Oh, 
No, big shot. Get rid of it. Oh, what a save from Corby Sallow. Just dump that thing down. Play it safe. Oh, big save. Corby Sallow. No! Jeez, are you kidding me? Six on four. I was looking for the puck there. Crosby scores it. 37 seconds left. Ties the game. I can't believe that. Like, if I didn't come in, my team probably most likely wins the cup. And now I might be the reason they lose it. But I'm not going to let that happen. Let's win this game. Shabbat here just saw in the corner. Looking for something. Looking for something. McDonough shot a net. Oh, Graylin! No way! Oh, are you kidding me? That puck was like on the line. I can pause it. It's uh, not an online game. I have to look at that. McDonough here takes the shot. Murray's coming across. Too far. Pad down. Granlin gets a piece of it. Crosby, the guy who keeps tying the game every time we get a lead. Oh my god. Oh, look at that. That is to save the Stanley Cup. He puts a skate and blocks it. That is insane. Like, if that goes in, we're up by one with 18 seconds to go. Sidney Crosby, are you kidding me? I, oh man, I think he actually scored the game tying goal as well. Like, Crosby is just OP, I guess. Okay, get rid of that garbage. Six seconds here till OT. Here you go, guys. Overtime, game six, Stanley Cup final. This is what we play for. Next goal wins. Uh, why is Colborne out there? I thought I put the first line out, not the fourth line. Who cares? Rip one. Brown, I mean, maybe he comes in as a scratch player with the heroics. Okay, let's get a face-off. I don't know. I must have accidentally put the fourth line out. Here we go. There we go. Sod, Granlin, Barzil, the main guys. They got Crosby out there still. Let's just get this back to the point. Try and put it in. Yossi, Dallin. Oh, I meant to shoot it. Oh, no. No way! Oh, man. I, I'm just, like, so... I can't play. I literally can't play. I can't believe that. I was trying to get it. I think Crosby scored again. Like, I have to check. Four goals he had. Saw had a hat trick. Crosby had four goals. And he had a skate that saved the game. I want to see what I did wrong here. So, terrible poke. And then I switched to Granlin, trying to turn him to pressure the guy. And then the computer defensemen, they just get locked with each other. And Crosby's wide open in the slot. Alright guys, here we go, game 7 in Pittsburgh. I'm so frustrated, I feel like if I didn't want to watch the celebration, we would have won at least one of those two games, but whatever. We're game 7 now, one game away from the Stanley Cup, I mean, you can't complain about that. Kessel's making it one nothing them. Oh my god, second period, Lazar, Nylander, Barzal, Lino. This team wants the Cup. Malkin gets one in the second, but we're up 4-2. Resume simulation here, come on boys, hold on to this. Shabak gets another, they're, they're not messing around here in game 7. Like, Crosby went god mode last game with four goals and a skate save on the line, which I still can't even wrap my head around. It's ridiculous. Um, okay, come on. Oh, there we go. Strom with one. I mean, 6-2 here. We are, uh, we're crushing it. We're crushing it. Minute and a half to go. 6-2. Let's watch that Stanley Cup, Sally. I just scored a goal, guys. I don't even know how it went in. I was just poking at it at the side of the net. Of course, the game, like, we're winning 6-2 is the one where I actually score on this superstar, Matt Murray, but... Wow, Colburn just got a hat trick, actually, uh, poking at that puck. But, all right, so 7-2 to now. I mean, I'm so excited here. Back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. I mean, our expansion team. I didn't think, like, the fact that we weren't even supposed to be in the playoffs, 86 points where we have, and now we're Stanley Cup champions. That is amazing. There we go. Probably not going to have you guys watch the entire celebration as you watched it last time, but we'll at least watch the guys get off the bench. I'm happy for them. Pretty much, you know, it's the core is still the same from last year. Obviously, we had to... Mix it around. Granlin came in for Barry. Added Haig, of course. Lost Carter. Lost Pavelski. Um, I think we lost a couple other players there. We lost Tierney, but most of the guys, obviously. Like, the core of the team, like I was saying, still there. Probably at least 75%. Feel bad for Crosby. Four goals last game. Dude did everything he could, but he couldn't stop the Seattle Magicians. And again, guys, Corby Sal is a Conn Smythe winner. Two goals against average. That's insane. It looked like he had a .93 save percentage, or it might have been 903, but um, either way, really good stats. And usually, too, if you don't have a player that goes absolutely off, like a forward, uh, the goalie gets the con Smythe. But here they go, bringing the cup out again. Shabak gets to lift it back to back years. I mean, that's, I'm still, I can't believe, literally, I literally went from thinking, like, oh man, good team, just missed the playoffs, or not gonna make the playoffs, what are you gonna do? And now we're back to back cup champs. Like, it's just insane. No Seattle fans in Pittsburgh either. Not a single Seattle fan that I can see, but that's okay. They look respectful there. They're all still sitting, uh, watching us with our two Stanley Cups. The uh, start of a dynasty here. Uh, so this is pretty great. I think last time, who got the cup first? I think it was like Connor Brown who got it first. So 
Uh, we'll see who gets it first here. Brown's still on the team. He was scratched. Is Brown going to get it again first? And no! Is this... Who is that? 72. Is that like Hag, maybe? Or no, Hag's 4. Who's this? Who is this guy? Liljegren, the uh, the rookie defenseman, the first to lift it. That doesn't really look like Liljegren. What are you going to do? Um, that's pretty curious. Or that's pretty cool. Um, next here, who's left in this one? 27, Dallin. So they're giving it to all the young defensemen. Um, that's, that's pretty sick. Love watching this. I think they have it run a little too long. What are you going to do? Looks like they got Dallin rocking some flow here, too. I think, does he have flow in real life? I don't even know. But, I mean, look at the jerseys. Look at that uniform. I didn't think it was really going to matter how they looked, but, I mean, apparently it does. Back-to-back -back cups, and the uh, celebration's so long. Corby Sal getting it there. All right, so here we go. Getting to the picture, finally. You got Getzlav there in the middle with Shabbat, Milano. Connor Brown's jumping in. Strom, I can tell what he looks like, too. And there we go. Stanley Cup champions, back-to-back -back years. Feels good. And somehow the first star of that game was Phil Kessel with a goal and assist. I think that's hilarious. Like, we beat them 7-2 and they're giving Kessel first star. I just love that. The draft lottery results just came in, guys. Chicago there with the first overall pick and the third overall pick. Um, Ottawa must be hating themselves for making that trade. But Detroit there actually with the 5th and 13th isn't too bad. But Chicago with 1-3, and three, that's pretty sick. They must have traded, like, somebody really good to get that high of a first. Or they did it, like way in advanced. Uh, view retired players here. Nobody on our team, so I'm actually really surprised. I thought Getzlav um, had a good chance of retiring. I'll take a look here at all the players that retired. Probably some pretty big names now. Zetterberg there retiring as a Leaf. Um, Eric Stahl, Corey Perry. Uh, so yeah, Perry retired, but Getzlav didn't. Spezza, 39. He went for a while. Parise, Shea Weber there. Lad, Hemsky, Bacchus. So pretty big names. Tyler Bozak, um, Callahan, Molson, Goligoski, Eves. So I mean, some. You know, not, I mean, nothing like too crazy now, but some pretty big names. Darren Helm there retired as a Panther. Pouillot. Uh, I'll take a look at goalies. I know I forgot to do it this uh, last time. Let's see here. Ryan Miller, Pecorine, uh, Kim Ward, Lettinen. So I mean, some actually decent names. Mike Smith, Jimmy Howard, uh, Johnson, Gustafson, Lack. So uh, some pretty big names. Nobody crazy, but some pretty big names retiring. I still can't believe, honestly, back to back Stanley Cup champions. I'm so happy. I think it was like last place in the last in the league, um, bad team that missed the playoffs, and then just barely made the playoffs. Like those were our first three years, and then back to back cup champs. Like that's a pretty sick five years there. I'll take a look here and see who uh, killed it in the playoffs for us. Looks like Getzlav was an absolute beast, 20 points in 22 games. Uh, we'll see who else came through. I know Backlund was looking pretty good. Uh, Barzl also played really well, 19. Sod at 18. I mean, a Hattie the one game. Uh, Yossi, 18. Sod's an 87 now. How do you drop after winning the cup and going off? Nylander, 16. Granlin only had 13. That's not too bad. Uh, Shabbat was a minus 3 somehow. Our only minus player. Or Brown was also minus 3 in Bracco, but and more in a minus 1. I don't know how that happens. Uh, I really don't care, though. We won the Stanley Cup. Uh, I'll take a look at the awards now, too. Um, C. So, back-to-back -back cup champions. That's awesome. You can't even see the Penguins uh, cup wins. It's kind of funny. President's Trophy, Tampa Bay back-to-back. Player awards, Stamkos with the Art Ross, um, and the Hart back-to-back -back years. James Norris with the Clef Bomb. McDavid with Lady Bing. Uh, Madden has the Calder. Corby Sala there with the Conn Smythe. Ag uh, oh, Granlin won it four years ago, so maybe Granlin's a big playoff performer. I don't know. Definitely going to try and keep him on the team. Uh, Vezin there with the Talbot, and the William Jennings as well. So Edmonton has some players on their team. We took them out easy first round. Spiza somehow with the Bill Masterson. I have no idea how they choose this. I think... Least amount of penalty minutes, maybe, like, in terms of the game. Uh, McDavid with the Selkie. Stamkos with the Ted Lindsay. And then Stamkos with Richard Shard. So, Stamkos, McDavid show, basically, is what happened there. Um, AHL. Uh, we'll take a look at the team awards first, I think. So, Calder Cup, Springfield Thunderbirds. Our team won the division. So, yeah, we won the Sam Pollock division. That's all we won. Player awards. Maybe we got something. Hendry. Uh, most outstanding rookie. Okay. I'm pretty sure he was, like, 26. But I guess he counts as a rookie. That's cool to see, I guess. You won a random, like, AHL award. You got Pavlich, Yandel, Andrado, like, some, like, other guys getting awards. But there we go, guys. Let's look at the awards. I don't really care, though. All I care about, back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champions. So amazing. Can we go for three? Can we get it done? Obviously, next year I'll be trying. Hopefully, I'm going to try and, like, keep uh, most of the core together as well. It's going to be tough with uh, different contracts and stuff. But I'm going to do my best. If you guys enjoy this video, leave that thumbs up. Stay tuned for more, guys. Next episode going for back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back cups. Let's get it.